Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will demonstrate how to create a codeless service that has logic that writes data into the backendless database. The data would be coming in the form of input parameters that you can pass into a method of that service, and then the service would just basically take them and write to the database. Something very simple, but still demonstrates the how to process parameters and then how to use codeless to interact with the database. The table that I will use in this example is called order, and I intentionally don't want to pre-create this table because I wanted to demonstrate how backendless can create data tables on the fly. So to start, I will switch to the business logic screen and create a new service that will be called order service, since that service will be dealing with orders. Click on the plus icon, switch to codeless, and type in the name of the service, which will be order service. Click save. And uh, for the purpose of demonstrating how to write data to the database, we will uh, create a method called create order. The operation is going to be put since we're creating new order. And there will be two parameters, order name, or it could be just name. Let's just keep it order name. The type is string. And then the second parameter is amount, which will be the amount of order uh, measured in, let's say, as number. That's it, uh, just two parameters to keep it simple. We will mark both parameters as required just to enforce some additional validation on the data that is coming in. Click Save, and Backendless will create a placeholder for that method. So at this point, the method is there. You can see that there are declared parameters, but there is no logic. So let's work on adding the logic for that method. The logic is going to be very simple because uh, Codeless provides a block if we go to data API, which contains all the blocks for working with a database, one of them will be save object in backendless. So drag it out here. You can put it right inside of the place placeholder. And the table name is going to be order. Even though the table doesn't exist, that is okay. The table will be created on the fly. Uh, and I will demonstrate how to uh, disable that functionality as well in case if you don't want any kind of dynamically created tables. And then the object here needs to be uh, an, an object that contains all the properties that you would want to save in that table. And uh, the way it's going to work is for every property you define in that object, a new column is going to be created. So to create a new object, if you scroll up here, you will see the object uh, category. Click on it and you will see a uh, block called create object. Drag it out here and put it into the connector. So in, in, in here, to create object, you can use this gear icon to specify as many pr properties of that object that, as you want. And uh, let's say that one of them is going to be name, and the other is going to be amount. Close it. And as you can see, since we declared the arguments for that method, you will have two uh, codeless blocks for the each representing the argument that is coming in. So the method argument order name will be attached to name and then the amount will be attached to amount. This is all it takes. This way, uh, uh, an order table will be created if it doesn't exist. It will contain two columns. One is called name, the other is called amount. And that the, the data that you're passing in will be stored as an object in that table. If you want your method to return the newly created object, it is very easy to do. Notice that there is this checkbox that says return result. And then the save object in backendless uh, block will return the created object. So this way, you just may want to return that object that has object ID and will be complete object as backendless returns it whenever you requ request it from there. So click return result and connect it to the result connector. So that's, that's all the logic for saving data in backendless. Click deploy model. Once it is deployed, you can switch to API services. And in here, to do the test invocation, switch to parameters. Click on the schema of body. And this way, you can just start entering data. So let's say the order name is going to be marks order. And the amount, let's say it is 300. Click invoke. And notice that in the result, we get the object that is created in backendless and uh, it has the object ID, which uniquely identifies this object in that table. Switching to the data screen, notice that there is now order table. 
and it has amount and name. And notice that the data types are also matching, so the name is a string, and then the amount is a double. And then this is the, the data that was placed in there. If we go back to the business logic section, same method, and now let's just create a different uh, order. So let's say it's going to be Bob's order. The amount is 5,000. Click Invoke. It is there. And then same data table will be used. Now it has two objects exactly as expected. Earlier I mentioned that it is possible to disable the functionality where tables are created on the fly. And if you don't want this behavior to be in the canvas, on the data screen, click the configuration tab and turn off dynamic schema definition. So once it is turned off, the new tables are not going to be created on the fly. Likewise, new columns in the data table will not be created on the fly. If you're trying to persist something uh, with a property that doesn't have a corresponding column, then this also disables that behavior. Kind of a useful tidbit of information. But as far as the logic for storing data in the canvas, here it is, as it is quite simple, very, very easy to understand, requires just a few blocks in Kotlin. I hope you find this useful. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, happy coding.